on to this now. Thousands have been arrested and over 200 people sadly killed during the unrest in Guazul Natal and Gauteng. And some theorists say while there is a real food crisis, a real jobs crisis and a real health crisis, a different uh, people make different choices, not only about how they want to live, but about how they go about confronting these realities okay. and uh, trying to change their lives. Uh, joining me now is uh, Francois Rogers. Uh, he is uh, the KZN DA leader, and Tlagani Pondombela is with the African National Congress in the province of KwaZulu Natal, and uh, the IFP uh, has given us uh, Mr. Narend Singh. You remember him as a member of uh, parliament belonging to the IFP. Gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for your time. I'd like to ask all of you uh, just a, a quick round question about uh, your sense of uh, the devastation that the province of Guazul Natal has gone through in the past week. How would you describe it? Let's start with you, Mr. Ndomel. Thanks, Tolly. Good day to the viewers at home. The devastation is huge. Uh, Business-wise, we have lost a number of businesses. The economy of the province has uh, nearly collapsed. Mm. But we believe that the government effort and the private sector partnership will assist us in trying to revive what is left of the economy of the province. What is good about it is that our people across all sectors have realized the damage caused and they are willing to come on board to salvage what is left of it. So the call we are making as an aim is that let us partner again to repeat Wazulu Natal as we always say Wazulu Natal, Masugu Minister K Wazulu Natal, but Monagala Wana indeed is huge. Right. Well, can we hear from Mr. Rogers from the Democratic Alliance? How do you view the situation? Thank you, Tolly. Uh, good morning and good morning to your viewers and the other colleagues. Uh, Tolly, I've spent the last four days going uh, around the province and assessing the damage on the ground. And, you know, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. Uh, I never thought I would live to see the type of destruction that we've just witnessed over those four days of, of anarchy. Hmm. And the sad reality is that the destruction is not solely directed at... Uh, but in fact, smaller businesses have been all but destroyed. I, I witnessed a young black lady in Peter Maritzburg who has a tailor business hmm. that started her business about a year ago, uh, borrowed money by sewing machines, etc., etc. It was absolutely looted and destroyed. And obviously, she doesn't have the capital uh, or the means to, to restart her business. So, you know, not only is there destruction of, of, of corporate investment in Japan, but the, the businesses have suffered as well. Yeah. And I think it's going to take at least 10 years to get uh, things back up and running. Mr. Singh, how does the IFP yeah. see the situation yeah. in Guazul Natal? Uh, yeah, good morning, Koli, uh, and, and good morning to your viewers and to my colleagues. Well, unfortunate, unprecedented and like my colleagues have said, have left in its wake a lot of destruction of property. Mm. But more importantly is the loss of lives that have taken place in the aftermath of this, uh, uh, you know, unforeseen incidences that caught, I think, the whole country off guard, more especially the security forces. forces. Mm. And what it's left in its wake is, you know, is poverty, unemployment, grief, and things that we have to deal with collectively as communities to, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, totally the, the, the destruction to property can be restored within five to ten years. We can borrow money, we can do whatever. whatever. Yeah. But the unforeseen tensions that are arising between communities is something that can be lifelong. And unless we arrest that situation sooner rather than later, you know, we could have more incidences moving forward. And I'm glad, Mr. Singh, that uh, you touch on the issue of tensions within the communities because I'd like to focus uh, this conversation to the area of Phoenix. What we have described 
perhaps in the media as racial tensions. Uh, some people see it completely differently. But I, I would like to paint a picture of what has been described as what happened there. And uh, we're going to uh, have a look or have a listen rather to a soundbite of uh, the EFF MP, uh, Mam Kaula, who spoke yesterday as part of uh, the Parliamentary Committee on uh, the Joint Defence Committee. And they were being briefed by the minister. And she detailed, she detailed what was really just gruesome and actually even reduced her to tears. I'd like for us to just have a listen to Mam Kaula, who was describing the situation as she saw it there. Let's just have a listen quickly first. All right, for those of you gentlemen who can't um, understand Isizulu, what Mam Kaula there was saying, and I'm paraphrasing, is that what she saw was just devastating. People were butchered, some of them were torched inside vehicles. There are those who cannot, to this day, at least find the remains of their loved ones who they suspect have lost their lives. Let me start with you, Mr. Ndombela. The situation in Phoenix, how do you propose it be fixed? First, we must admit that something went wrong in Phoenix, Tony. While the ordinary citizens of Phoenix claim to be protecting their own properties, some of them went on rampant vigilantism against any black person they will find on the street. There is a fact we must admit and deal with it. Regardless of the criminals whom they might have said that but they are people who were killed simply because they were black in Phoenix. And the figures might be more than the numbers which have been alluded to. That requires that all of us as leadership must own up on that and said something went wrong. But secondly, the law enforcement agencies must be seen to be doing something to arrest those individuals who did that. Because if we don't do so, we'll be seen that the laws of staff are never are not colorblind. That if criminality is done by other races, it is condoned when it's done by black people, they are arrested even for stealing a SM and a milli meal. But those who killed openly they are left alone. So the ANC is clear that those who have killed people who want only through vigilantism, not protecting their property, they must be arrested mm -hmm. and to get to it. But as the leadership, as the end, as the other colleagues are saying, they have been there, we have been there, the premier has been there, the minister of police has been there. We must still call them moving forward to try and restore calm. But it does not stop for justice to be seen to be done by those who have done something wrong. Yeah. Mr. Singh, let's come to you. There are those who are saying that labeling what happened in Phoenix as racial killings is actually being soft or perhaps trying to mask the tragedy that occurred there. There are those who describe it as the Phoenix massacre, and there are those who describe what happened there as racial killings. How does the IFP describe what happened there? 
Well, firstly, I cannot agree with Mr. Ndombala, my colleague Mr. Ndombala, that uh, people who may have committed these crimes, these heinous crimes, are being left alone. And, you know, left alone by whom? We've got police, we've got detectives, and we've got everybody else, and it is their respons primary responsibility, responsibility to arrest those that who have been found to have committed these crimes. I mean, one life lost is one too many. I do appreciate that the uh, focus is on Phoenix at the moment, where probably more than 20 people uh, were, were, were killed, but you know, over 200 people were killed around the country. But if these were vigilante groups and people who are known in the communities, then my appeal to the communities of both of Bombay, Zwelisha, Phoenix, come together as I heard when I was in a meeting the other day and identify those people that were the so-called killers. And I think the police are working on some very good leads uh, in that regard. And I would like to see, uh, the, as the IFP, we would like to see people behind bars sooner rather than later. So that may provide some kind of comfort to those who have lost lives that the uh, police and the law and order in, in our country is doing its job. Yeah. One must also understand fully that, you know, what happened in the first and second days was something unprecedented, as I said earlier. There were, there were real fears of people, and then they started having checkpoints and things like that. But there is no doubt, Mr. Dombella is right, that in some of the areas, some of the overzealous people at these checkpoints began racial profiling. And that is something that South Africa cannot afford at this moment in time. We've worked together as different communities in our country, as proud South Africans. We need to restore the stability moving forward. And people like Mr. Dombella and Mr. Rogers and others, as leaders, we have to come together to go into those communities and call for peace and calm, but also call for justice to be meted out uh, against the perpetrators of violence. Mr. Rogers, I'm going to come to you. In a moment, I am in conversation with the leaders of uh, the ANC, IFP, and the Democratic Alliance, uh, represented by Francois Rogers, who is with the DA in KZN. Mr. Rogers, as I said before we went to that short break, you as the Democratic Alliance have been on the ground in KZN, and you have gone to some degree of uh, even posting pictures, uh, at least some of your officials, to say you are on the ground trying to uh, prevent any further unrest. What happened in Phoenix? Uh, how do you see it as the Democratic Alliance? Uh, Mr. Singh talks about racial profiling, and perhaps uh, the issue here is what some are saying is that we should perhaps call it for what it is, and that is that it is a massacre of black people in particular, and that what happened there were actually racial killings. Do you agree? Thank you. Uh, you are, are quite right. The killing of any human being uh, to, that, to that extent should be called a massacre, and we should treat it exactly as that. And as my colleagues have both said, uh, we have law enforcement, uh, we have uh, a judiciary that must now play its role in a prosecuting authority, and those be people must be brought to book, and they must be brought to justice. That's, that's what we want to see, because that's what will stop this. Fully indeed, we had uh, a lot of our public representatives on the ground trying to calm the situation down and to bring some sort of sense of normality back into that community. There was a lot of anger and a lot of tension. And I think if we don't deal with the root cause of what happened throughout the province, we're never going to get to the bottom of this. So quite simply, we had a failed state. Now, I want to disagree with Norand on one thing. I cannot say this was unforeseen. We knew this was coming. Any logical person could have worked out what was going to happen over the last few weeks. And our state and our government was absolutely unprepared for what was going to happen. This didn't just happen over a day, it happened over four days. And yet we didn't see any deployment of large numbers of SANDF or South African police force on the ground mm -hmm. to bring about some stability. And I think that compounded the fear, the anger in those communities. But I want to make it quite clear. 
that even under those situations, it does not warrant any sort of vigilantism or any sort of attack on any racial group. That is absolutely unacceptable. But clearly, I must also add, yesterday I was in Port Chepstow. Hmm. Uh, there's, a, there's a fruit market in Port Chepstow. Two young black children were burnt to death uh, in a factory. You know, this Phoenix is, is just one of the areas. I don't know the details of the, of the horror that happened in Port Chepstow, but throughout our province, it's just been absolute anarchy. And I think Narendra was right. I think collectively as leaders, we now need to find a way forward. We need to unite the center. And we saw the unity throughout our province during the anarchy. People stood together mm. from all over, from all walks of life, from all religions. And they said, we're going to protect within the realms of the law, protect our property and our lives. And to me, that's encouraging. That says that there are patriotic South Africans out there who prepare to stand together under adversity. Yeah. Mr. Ndombele, let's come to you. I, I don't want to allow for this conversation to be a political one because Mr. Rogers talks about the state having failed dismally here. But you earlier touched on a very interesting point that perhaps as opposed to chasing instigators of this, the people that should be a priority for law enforcement to arrest are those that have butchered, in the words of Umam Kaula, and killed black people in the area of Phoenix. Is, is that what you are saying? No, no, no. Sorry. I was specifically regarding the Phoenix matter I was speaking about. Yeah. But regarding the indicators, the ANC is clear on that, that the law enforcement agencies, they must act with speed. And that speed we are worried about that is not at the level we are expecting it to be. Remember, they were spoken of about 12 individuals identified. Surely, if you had identified those 12 individuals, you should have been knowing who are those 12 individuals. Mm. I think now only about three or four were told they've been arrested. We have seen one or two appearing in court. We don't know about the other ones who have not yet appeared. So, there is an issue that ends with emphasize that. Fortunately, we had a portfolio committee yesterday jointly with the police nationally and the provincially and the defense with the minister of defense, minister of police, and we raised that issue to them that we think they are not moving at a pace we are expecting them to be moving at, whether it be it intelligent driven work, but for the community on the streets there, if they are not seeing any individuals arrested, they have been instigators. Mm -hmm. and you have done all of this, there will be no peace in our province. All right. Because until all of those individuals are identified and arrested, then we'll get to know exactly what happened, what caused, what led to this happening. Because as it happened, clearly it was planned. It was not sporadic. I'll all right. for you and everybody. Okay. All right. So that, that's very interesting coming from you then, Mr. Ndombela. As I come to you, Mr. Singh, I just want to play a quick soundbite of um, the secretary of the ANC in Guazulu Natal, who was almost dismissive of the so-called instigators that are being rounded up. But I don't want to put words in his mouth. I'd like for you to listen carefully to what Mdumisen Nduli told this show yesterday. Let's have a listen. Look, our, our own view is that uh, it's too early. We are yet to see whether indeed this was an exaggeration. Remember, Tony, you may not know this. Uh, an, exager an, an, exaggeration, an exaggeration or a coup, as some ministers have made reference to, first and foremost, you must be having a distinct and noticeable leadership. It can't just be a chaos of people in different parts of the country whose actions are, in essence, bordering on counter-revolution, that may later on result in a chaos in society that may give rise to a condition for an insertion. So in our view, we, we are too far from that. We, we believe that in terms of our analysis last night, this which we saw happening in the province was a, an element of looting that was embedded on some a tendency towards what may be understood 
in our own language as a movement, as a counter revolutionary, where you cause a distraction, you you make things completely uh, impossible, and you create a chaos in society without necessarily having a distinct and discernible uh, potential characters or leaders who, in an event where government was replaced, were going to take over. We don't think that uh, we are we are at that stage at the moment. Look, the role that Ngizwem uh, Kun uh, really has played in this, in terms of our understanding. Firstly, he has absolutely no influence in the African National Congress. I don't even know if he's a member of, I don't even know if he's a member of the NC. He doesn't participate in any of our structures, as far as I know. If he has, uh, he has been involved, it may be in a certain branch somewhere where he has no prominence whatsoever in any region or even in the province in Wazul Natal. So, to, to, his involvement, which I think we've seen, and we're yet to understand more now that he's arrested, has been a regular statements that he has been making in the media over the past two or three months. Whether that constitutes sufficient basis to even characterize him as one of the core instigators and a possible leader of what would have ultimately become an insurrection, we're yet to see. Our view is that uh, let's deal with people who are, who are mobilizing around chaos, and the social media post that they've posted for what it is. Mr. Singh, what do you make of those uh, two sound bites? <laughs> One on insurrection, that it was leaderless, therefore you possibly can't call it an insurrection. And as far as instigators are concerned, well, uh, he doesn't see the person who's just appeared in court today as possibly seen as among those who were at the core of the so-called uh, instigation of this? Well, clearly, let, 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 let the law enforcement agencies determine that, whether the persons that are being rounded up are really guilty of uh, uh, causing this mayhem or initiating this mayhem. But I think it's not going to take rocket science for South Africans and for people around the world to realize that a lot of this tension rises from tensions within the African National Congress as a ruling party. Ever since President Ramaphosa was uh, uh, elected as the president of the ANC, we've seen these tensions play themselves out in parliaments, in local government, uh, at local structures, uh, even amongst the uh, most senior leaders within the political party. And, and, and I think we, we must not shy away from the fact that that's where its genesis is. But having said that, I think what happened over the last weekend, which should have started off as a hashtag free Zuma campaign, which, which, which is a protest that any South African citizen is allowed to participate in, got out of hand. And, and I think one of the things that we need to do moving forward is that there has to be a lot of circumspection and introspection within the ruling party itself, uh, because they, as a party, can contribute uh, to peace in our country with all of us as leaders of other political parties and with leaders on the ground. So, so you know, and it's unfortunate that ministers within the security uh, cluster can talk past each other, uh, albeit publicly, uh, when one says, yes, I received a message, and the others say no. But that is in the past. Let us learn from the lessons of the past mm -hmm. and let us work together to ensure that such things do not happen. And even if we can get a center force uh, of, of politicians in this country uh, and, and separate uh, colloquially the good from the bad, let's do that and move forward to build our beautiful country. Mr. Rogers, your l closing remarks on this, and I'd like for you to perhaps have a a slightly more, um, I'd like you to talk directly to the communities of Phoenix and the, the surrounding areas on the back of what has happened. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to ask your indulgence. I, I just want to raise two issues about whether this is in, insurrection or just criminal. I was in Kanubia uh, yesterday or the day before. We found aerial maps uh, clearly detailing where um, cameras, security cameras were placed. Uh, those aerial maps also identified the businesses that had to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And if you compare the aerial map to what happened, it's there. Now, that's not criminal activity. The chemical plant that was set alight in Durban, 
the fire hydrants surrounding that property were all destroyed. That's not criminal activity. That there is an agenda there. So I want to agree. I want to agree with with Norrent on that. My my appeal to to the communities in KwaZulu Natal and to to the community in in Phoenix. Now that we've established a fair semblance of law and order, let's allow those security forces to do their job, to bring to book those who have trans transgressed the law. Mm. Let's bring stability to our province. Let's unite. We united during the five days of anarchy. Let's reunite. Let's rebuild and get ourselves back to where we, we should be. That is my simple appeal uh, to all communities throughout KwaZulu-Natal. Mm. Uh, let's work together and rebuild our province, and let's be once again proud. But having said that, Cody, if we don't identify the root cause of the problem that we've just faced, then my words are going to fall on deaf ears. Sure. Here's what we're going to do, gentlemen. I, I really desperately wanted to close it, but let's have one last round, but we're going to have it uh, just after this short breather. As we go to the dying minutes of this show, I'm still in conversation with the leaders of the ANC, IFP and the Democratic Alliance in Guazulu Natal. Uh, Mr. Ndomela, let's uh, conclude the conversation. You've heard the sentiments from both Mr. Singh and Mr. Rogers that it's time for introspection and perhaps it's time to do that with lots more honesty at this time around. And if we are to be honest, they're saying the roots of what we saw are directly as a result of the divisions within the ANC. And if we are going to introspect, we've got to do that then uh, with honesty as to what the root causes of this are. Can you really do that as the ANC if you are even divided about whether to call this a failed insurrection as the president called it? or? as the leadership in KZN said, that perhaps that might be an exaggeration. Who must the nation listen to? As an ANC, we have been clear from the onset on these issues, from the beginning of the year since Nazareth, that there are activities within the organization. And that's why even in our general statement, in the end statement, emphasis on organizational unity and renewal is a key point. They too are not in denial thereof as an organization. But secondly, there is something we need to understand. When the secretary was speaking yesterday, he had no information detailed as what we had got from the portfolio committee. When he spoke, he spoke analyzing the situation as it is in the province. But the detail we got from the portfolio committee told you that there is something beyond the justice, clear and unconvinced. It was clearly coordinated. There were teams waiting first to break the shops before the important masses comes to loot. Mm. They were to move to other places. The same happened when, when there is that in Mobin, when they stole those firearms. Yeah. It's people who knew. So, 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 Mr. Ndombele, so, so, Mr. Ndombele, to cut in and to quickly, in the interest of time, to cut in, you're saying that the ANC leadership in Guazul Natal is today willing to accept that perhaps this was a failed insurrection, as the president termed it? The president has put clearly what has happened, because he had the information detailed with everything at his hand. As the ANC, as an organization, there is the information we get, some of it is more detailed as we meet on Monday. So when we interact with the ANC leadership, the provincial secretary, for example, is not a, a public office bearer of a legislature. There is an information not be private to before he engage with you as a media. He would not have answered you the same on some of the issues as he would have, as I'm doing now, after getting a briefing yesterday. So what, the is, the, so the what is the position of the ANC in Basul Natal? Something was coordinated. Whether you define it in either way, but this was coordinated, it did not just happen from anywhere else. And out of that coordination is called out of hand. 
All right. And just got out of hand. That is the situation you must face. And where can say how to correct it moving forward? Because we are the governing party. We are a ruling party in the province and national. That we must pawn up on and work on rectifying moving forward. Mr. Singh, is that uh, good enough introspection in your view well, well, uh, from a governing well, I think, party? Uh, well, actually, I think I appreciate the honesty of uh, Honorable Ntombella. Uh, and, uh, you know, what he said is quite correct. Some people speak without having all the information on the table, but he has been privy to information. I think what we need to do, uh, Koli, is uh, we've started as the IFP together with the provincial chairperson of the IFP, Mr. Tamkana Ntuli, uh, where on Saturday and Sunday we were visiting communities in the Komashu Hostel, where we addressed thousands of people. We moved along to the Duffs Road Avoka area, brought communities together, set up joint communities of peace-loving people. We went again to Lotus Park and Sapingo. We met our leaders from the Umlazi Hostel, because there have been reports of hostel dwellers being mobilized uh, to attack certain communities. And we wanted to allay the fears of those communities. But I think what we need to do now is collectively, let's go out, let's build, let's see how we can bring about uh, unity amongst all people of the province in particular, but also insist that the law enforcement agencies must not only uh, deal with perpetrators of heinous crimes, but also provide safety and comfort to the people of KwaZulu-Natal where they reside, that they are present, they will be ever present, and that there will be no need whatsoever for communities to be having checkpoints, etc. I think that kind of uh, assurance from the side of the security forces will have a salutary effect on the situation moving forward. Mr. Rogers, final words, please. Well, yeah, from my side, I think, uh, I think we've agreed now is the time for sober uh, reflection, uh, particularly in the, in the ruling party. And I think it's now time for leadership to, to put their hand up. And I want to tell you where I live in Coxstead, we have an ANC mayor, Begum Tolo, who was in fact part of the team made up of our entire community that shut Coxstead down. Mm. And we wouldn't allow people in and out. There's been no looting in Coxstead. There's been no destruction. Now that to me shows non-partisan leadership in times like this is exactly what our province needs. Thanks, wow. Paul. Thank you very much. Uh, that's uh, the leaders of uh, the ANC in Guazul Natal, Mshlagani Pontombela, uh, the IFP, Naren Singh, and uh, the Democratic Alliance, Francois Rogers. Thanks indeed for your time.